is the very, very long awaited update video. I have been emailed and asked and asked, when am I going to come up with the update video? When, when am I going to tell everybody what's happened? And I've held off because I haven't really been ready to talk about certain things. And in a way I'm still not, but there's just so much and so much and so much and so much that keeps happening that I want to just go ahead and make this. I've tried to make it a few times, but I didn't feel like I was quite ready, the videos are quite right, so I just deleted them, but hopefully this one will go up and I can finally post it. Just a warning, it's going to be very long because obviously it's been a while since I've been heard from, so uh, be prepared to listen to a lot of blabbing. <laughs> First of all, the biggest news of all, it's kind of like a bundle, and that is that Josh and I have moved again. and. Uh, Without giving away our exact location, we are in the Jacksonville, Florida-ish area. So we've moved a couple of hours away, well, quite a few hours away. We've moved away from the area we were in, and we're still not in a big city, but we are in a, we're in a town that is about 30 minutes away from a pretty big town, 15 minutes away from a bigger town than we're, than we're in and about an hour away from a really big city so we're right in the middle of civilization while we're not ourselves in a big city we are very very close to big cities so we have access to a lot more than we did before and um, aside from that along with that we have also bought our own house <laughs> and I'll explain more about that in a minute you might remember last time I was really online online is when my mom died and we were struggling to get the money to go to her funeral. We couldn't pay the power bill. We didn't have money for food. We were just struggling left and right. And Josh and I understood that that was just, it was no way to live. That was no life for us. Um, we do deserve better than that. <laughs> and um, it's just not it's not fun to struggle that way. You never know what emergencies might arise and we were not prepared for anything. Part of that is because I came here so suddenly, we didn't really have the time, either of us, to kind of get our lives together and get ready for this huge move that we've made by me coming over here and starting a new life here. And that was because when Logan and I had our talk in New Zealand, um, whether in our heads we knew it was over when we voiced it everything after that happened boom 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 we talked about it realized you know the relationship was over etc etc he wanted to move to his mom's we had two weeks left at that house for me to figure out what I was gonna do um, Josh and I discussed it he wanted me to come here I wanted to come here and um, jo uh, Logan went to his mom's and I went to my ex to wait until I could you know get some more money together Josh could get at least a little bit more organized and then I could come over here. Um, Josh had been a bachelor for a while. He was just used to taking care of himself. He usually ate out, didn't really own anything. You know, he just lived very simply as most guys do when they're young bachelors or whatever. And um, when I got here, whatever money I had, I used to buy the rest of the stuff that he wasn't able to get before I got here. Uh, before I got here, he moved out of the house he was in and he got us a separate house, um, one that he liked better. He didn't like the place he was living in before. He had he had been wanting to move out of there because he didn't like his landlord. His landlord is kind of, it's really hard to find good landlords, especially around, you know, this area. They're all kind of, they've got that southern laid backness to them. But in saying that to them, it also means they don't need to fix anything or take care of anything or help you. They just want your money. And so if anything's wrong, good luck getting them to fix it. They won't really lift a finger to help. So he just didn't want anything to do with that guy and where he was living, got a new place, got a new better paying job and, you know, tried to get his life ready for me to come. And it was a lot to do on his side to go from living alone, taking care of yourself to having to get your life ready to take care of somebody else, to have somebody else come stay with you. And uh, he did it. So I got here at the first place we were in. It was, it was a nice place. I really liked that place. But it was, there was problems with it. The landlord lived right across the street. Couldn't be bothered coming over to fix anything that they said was wrong with it. I will not even go into detail with 
exactly what was wrong with that place, but there was a lot. And we just, we were really, really unhappy there. And since we couldn't get them to do anything about it, we decided to move. We moved into another place that was suggested to us. And we thought that that place would be good. This one, the landlord lived, like the landlord's son lived right next door to us. And um, that place was even worse than the first place. And I won't go into details about how bad that was, but it is almost one of the worst places I've ever lived in. It was just wrong on all levels and they wouldn't fix anything. But they could tell us off if we had like a box that needed to go to the dump that was sitting outside the, the front or the back door. You need to throw that away like we're going to the dump this week. You know what I mean? How, how can you see across the yards that we have something, but you can't walk over to fix this, you know, fix even the screen door or anything like that. And we knew we needed to get out of there and we discussed it. And we were like, you know, a big change has to happen. We have got to get out of this area and we don't want to rent anymore because we're paying all this money to these people who won't fix the places up. They won't do anything to help you. And like, the first place we needed a new stove and they wouldn't replace the stove so we had to buy a new stove and that that should be under them not under us you know things like that floors caving in and just problems that they refuse to fix for the amount that you're paying to rent a place so we decided we wanted to try to buy what we did was we found this old man that wanted to move away because he's disabled now he can't walk and he can't take care of the house himself so he wanted to sell it he asked for a very small deposit like way smaller than a bank would have asked for um, still a couple of thousand dollars but you know manageable and um, a pretty average monthly rent uh, payment whatever and uh, we drove out we looked at the place we fell in love with it it instantly felt like home you know some places you walk into and you know right away this is my home like you could just see yourself living there and that's what this place was for us and we we had our heart set on it we worked with him we saved we saved and we went to the bank <laughs> we got some help from the bank um got all the money together and we gave him the deposit and he signed the papers we we all signed contract and stuff and i mean we don't own it yet but we are i guess renting to own but He's like 76 years old or something and he can't walk. There's no way he could take care of this. So he's not coming back. This, this is our place. We're not ever going to have to leave or move or worry about anything. And it is such an amazing feeling to know that you own your own place or you're going to own your own place. We'll have this place paid off in six years In six years. It'll be completely ours. And, um, it is a trailer cause like, almost everything around here are trailers and I don't really care I like trailers the last two trailers we lived in were pieces of shit but this one is not this one is really nice and it's spacious it's uh it's got two bedrooms two bathrooms uh, a built-in room on the porch a shed out back and it's got lots of land so we own land as well um, it's got this lot and a lot behind it so if we wanted to we could actually build onto the lot behind us and rent that out or whatever um but we've got plenty of space here it's uh, almost an acre of land and it is really 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 nice it's really nice we can paint it we can decorate it we can do whatever we want with it we don't have to worry that they're going to raise the rent or we're going to have to move out it's just so much freedom and it is an unbelievable feeling i cannot tell you how great it feels to know that we've taken this step and in less than the time that I was stuck in New Zealand we will own the rights to this place and the land completely free and clear um, as for how we afforded that uh, we started looking for work and Josh actually got a job um, he, he got a pretty good paying job and I also have a job I'm of all things I am working in a tattoo studio so that is like a perfect fit for me and I'm so happy we are busy all the time we are working so much we don't have hardly a chance to breathe I mean we come home and it's just like I don't want to move I don't want to do anything so the house is still not completely done um, which is why I'm not gonna do a house tour as of yet because the house isn't where we're not done 
fixing stuff up and, and painting or whatever we're going to do at all yet. Um, I want to have the house looking completely finished before I do a tour. So I don't know when that's going to be when we're going to have any free time for that, but that's where it stands right now. Um, what else? Uh, we went to a theme park uh, the other day and I'm going to put together a video of that. We, we actually had planned to go there while we were still living in like the last place we were in. We were going to go for Josh's birthday, but we just never, we never got a chance to. We were just too busy trying to do all this stuff and try to make the right steps to better our lives and to have a better, easier life so we weren't struggling anymore. And um, we just put it off and put it off and put it off. And now it's close to my birthday and um, it's the first, it's my 42nd birthday and it's the first birthday with him physically because last year I was still in New Zealand. And um, so we went there for my birthday before they closed, like for the winter or whatever. And um, that was pretty fun. It it could have been better. I mean, it was it was fun being with him, but the park itself, like they cut the rides so short. They're like 30 seconds long, and it was so hot. We both felt sick right away. Thought we we're gonna have to leave early. I'll go into all that in, in that video. I'll leave that there. A um, couple more things. We also got a new car. Um, we own that free and clear. We have a 2006, 2005, 2006 uh, black Ford Explorer, and it is beautiful. It's it's all black. It's got black tinted windows. It's got black leather interior. Um, it's got like climate control, and I have a video of it somewhere. So I'll see if I can add the video here. If not, just take my word for it. I'll put a picture in it at least. Um, as for our Jeep, we uh, we gave that to a friend of ours. We did what was done for us, and we passed it along to somebody who really needed it. We we fixed about 75-80% of the things that were wrong with it, and we gave it to her. And uh, she had helped us out before, and we thought, you know, she really needed a vehicle. She really needed the freedom, and... Instead of trying to sell it, we, we wanted to do the right thing and we just gave it to her. And hopefully if she's ever in the same position where she doesn't need it anymore and she sees someone who needs it, maybe she'll pass it along or maybe she'll just keep it until it just blows up and it's lived its life. But either way, it's, it's hers now and we feel really good that we were able to do something to help somebody else. Um, uh, um, I think the last thing I want to talk about is addressing the doja stuff because people have asked about him what has happened with him and this has been really hard to talk about i really haven't wanted to talk about it but um people deserve an explanation so i will give it to you now the last place we were in as you know we put our bed in the living room so that we could be with him because that place was built so stupidly the hallways were so thin as it was, the bedrooms were so small. Once our bed was in it, you like couldn't walk. You couldn't even fit a dresser or anything in there. So there was no way that the dog would have fit in there with us. So in order for us not to leave him alone so much of the time and being old and new, we wanted to be around him. So we put our bed in the living room for him. And the bedroom that we were in, the door didn't close and clasp. So we always had it barricaded with boxes and stuff. And so it wouldn't open you couldn't push it open or anything like that. And um, one morning we were asleep and it was storming really bad outside. And we heard screaming and screaming and crying coming from outside. And Josh said, oh my God, it's a kitten. And I was like, why is there a kitten outside? And we went and some mama cat had given birth underneath the trailer and abandoned the kittens. I swear I heard more than one. But by the time I actually broke the skirting off and was able to crawl under and look I only found one so I don't know if she came back or if they died because I wasn't going to crawl the length of the trailer I couldn't hear anything after that I just saw the one close to where the skirting was and he was he was so cold and shaking he was tiny he was the tiniest little thing he fell right in the palm of my hand he must have been only maybe two weeks old if that and um I'll show you pictures of him
and he was so cute. His name, we named him Stormy because he had such a stormy start to his life, and it was stormy, so cliche, but he was adorable, and Josh went out and got um, kitten replacement milk, and I got a bottle, and I bottle fed him, and you know, when I we put him first, the first day we had him with us in a cat litter tray, we put a hot water bottle in there for him and some blankets, and we just kept him right close to us. And then after that, we put him in the back bedroom, um, closed the door because you could get into that back bedroom through the bathroom, which doors always the doors always closed tightly, or through the door that was barricaded. But we never opened that door; we always left it barricaded um, because there's a pin in the ass to keep closing it. And I don't like open doors in houses, so I like all doors closed. We never showed Doja the kitten. We, he never looked up when he heard him meowing. He never woke up, looked interested. The only thing that dog did was eat, fart, and shit. He wanted to go outside and shit, piss and shit. He didn't really care about playing or looking around or anything. You know, he was supposedly blind. He didn't like to do anything. He just slept all the time and he liked his treats and... That's about it. He just lay in the corner and fart. You know, he never took notice of the kitten. We never saw a reason to be like, look, here's a kitten, introduce him at all. So they were kept separate the whole time. Doja never, ever even looked like he knew the kitten was there. I took a nap one day. Oh, and I want to tell you too, it was so cute because Stormy, for whatever reason, when I would go in to feed him and stuff, and I'd go in the room, Stormy, and he'd meow and he'd look up and he'd be trembling and he'd wobble over to me like he always starts screaming and crying and meowing and he wanted to climb clamber up onto my lap and just start purring he was so happy like he was recognizing us already and wanting to be around us and you know cuddling with us and it was the sweetest thing and he was gonna grow up to be the most beautiful beautiful cat ever and um anyway i was taking a nap i woke up um i, I just like felt like something was wrong i woke up and there was light streaming down the hallway and there shouldn't have been light because, like I said, I keep all the doors closed. And my heart sunk and I was like, oh no. And I walked down there and the door was open. The door that was barricaded had been forced open. And it took a lot of force to force that door open. It wasn't like you could just go, thunk, and it opened. No, you had to push the boxes out of the way. Um, Stormy didn't come out. And I, I was like, oh no, and I was like, Stormy, Stormy, he didn't come out. I looked everywhere. I looked behind suitcases, behind boxes, everywhere. I looked in the bathroom even. He was nowhere. When I'd woken up, Doja was asleep in his bed, so I, I didn't really think anything. Over by one of the suitcases, which was across the room from his bed, I saw a little pile of red crumbs, and I thought, please let this be dog biscuit or something, because they're red biscuits that we would give Doja red and brown and yellow you know the the chew biscuits and I picked them up and they weren't biscuits they were his ribs little chunks of his ribs and a little chunk of his skull with his teeth and my heart sunk and I just started crying and crying and I called Josh and I was like oh my god Doja broke into the room and ate the kitten the kitten obviously tried to get away because he was across the room not in his bed he he tried to stumble away and somehow this blind dog that didn't care about anything chased him down and gobbled him up and this dog was supposedly raised around cats loved cats thought cats were his friends and all that stuff and he still ate the kitten and whether it's natural or not i could not look at that dog again without picturing that poor little kitten being picked up and chomped up and and crushed to death he didn't deserve that at all and that would have been a horrible way to go he was alive and he was aware and he was affectionate and he he wanted to live you know i mean he was the happiest little survivor you know and i'll never forget going in there and finding that little pile of bones and i just i just couldn't do it i couldn't do it anymore i, I told josh he needs to he needs to go just i can't look at him ever again it's just it disgusted me and it horrified me it freaked me out and it was depressing and for the rest of the week Josh and I we would just you know sit there and reminisce and think about the poor little kitten and we'd hold each other and we'd cry and just like you know he just didn't deserve that and I, I can't even imagine you know how scared he would have been or you know what it would have been like for him to be trying desperately to get away from this dog and this dog just picking him up because 
whether it was a fast death or not, which Josh tried to reassure me by telling me that, um, he still would have at least felt the first bite, you know, whether after that he was already dead, he would have felt the pain of that first bite or the first few chomps and I will forever hate Doja for doing that, regardless if it was a natural thing or not. I mean, I had the door barricaded, he had to force his way in there and you know, I feel guilty for taking a nap in the middle of the day, but, like, I had to feed the kitten every two hours, and I was exhausted, you know, I, I needed a nap, I needed to rest, and the, it just so happens he just got it in his head to go where he wasn't supposed to, and, you know, he killed my kitten, and, um, that's why Doja is gone. I contacted the lady that dropped him off, and I explained what happened, I said, I just don't want him here, I can't look at him. Uh, I'll never be able to forget what I saw and like in the back of my mind I I feel like I heard a, a kitten screaming and that's what woke me up and it couldn't have been because when I woke up and I saw the light I looked and Doja was in his bed so unless he ran and feigned sleep or I woke up later than I thought I did after hearing it then I, I couldn't have heard it but regardless it was fucking awful and, um, that is the story of why Doja was rehomed. When we told her that, she did say that, well, with his surgeries and things, he needs to go to the vet more often than we were able to take him. Because at the time, you know, I see no reason to get my license because Josh and I are usually always together. Now, you know, he can drop me off and pick me back up again and things like that. So it's not, it's just not necessary for me to have my license. He can take me where I need to go, and I like being with him. He likes being with me. I, you know, we prefer him driving me places anyway. And, um, especially over there, there was no reason for it. And he needed the car to go to work, and with his hours, the only time he was free to go to the vet was on Saturdays. And there are vets that work there on Saturdays. And originally they said that was okay, but then later on they said, no, well, actually he needs to go more than that. But that is not the reason we gave him up. It wasn't because he needed to go to the vet and we couldn't take him. I mean, that wouldn't that wouldn't have been a, a reason to give him up. You know, you know when you get an animal, they need to go to the vet. So you, none of us knew that he had any kind of, uh, like, health problems or, like, he needed any urgent care when we got him. We, we were all oblivious to that. The chick who dropped him off to us, the lady at the dog rescue, none of us knew any of that. Um, but we were prepared to deal with it, prepared to handle it, prepared to take care of him, but then he did that, and that was something that I never thought I'd have to live through, and I was not prepared for that, and I was not prepared to have to look at him again and think that he did that, and so, you know, he's probably off to a better home now. She seemed quite happy to take him back, um, because I guess she, she didn't like that we could only take him to the vet once a week or something. Um, on that topic, however, we do have pets now. We actually have quite a few pets now. They've been with us for a while. Um, they've been with us since before we moved, actually. We have three kittens, first of all, and these three kittens, were, it was originally two. They're all sisters, but it was originally two. The two kittens, um, we had already made plans to get before we got Doja, but we were just waiting for them to be old enough because the lady had contacted us and we were we were talking about stuff and they were only like five weeks old. We got them when they were 12 weeks old, so there was quite a long waiting period. And um, the only good thing I could see from Stormy's death, if that, is that we at least knew what Doja was capable of because I would hate to think that we would have gotten these kittens and he would have eaten them you know, gobble them up or something. Um, yeah, um, so in a way, Stormy could have saved their lives, you know, in a roundabout way, which is still fucked up. But, um, anyway, so we got these two sisters. It was originally going to be one because she looked a lot like one of Marmalade's kittens, and I, I was like, oh my god, I want that one. She looks like my Marmalade's baby. And then the lady said, well, I've actually got another one that's got a, like a split face. And I was like, oh my god. And I saw her and I fell in love with her. She's got like, she's a, ta uh, she's a tortoise shell, but she's got like 
half an orange face and then like half a tortoiseshell face. Not a complete half and half, but pretty close. And she's got like chunks of like orange cat in her. So she kind of looks like a mix of marmalade. And she acts like marmalade and she's got marmalade's eyes. Marmalade had the coolest, most unique eyes. I mean, I'm sure there's other cats with those eyes, but I've never owned a cat with this color eye. Um, they're green in the middle right around the pupil and then it's like bright yellow on the outside so the green and yellow and this cat just so happens to have the exact same eye color and she is my baby she only comes up to me she she lets Josh kind of touch her but she loves me I call her name she comes running she sits on my lap she licks me on my my mouth and she's my baby she loves me to death um, there were five kittens in that litter there's two boys and three girls the third girl she's a tortoise shell as well but she's got real weird markings um she almost looks like she's wearing like a dead skin mask or something she's kind of scary looking like she always looks angry like she wants to rip your face off and because she looks like that nobody wanted her um the lady who had them said that she was having a really hard time finding home for her because everybody was like oh is that the only one you have left i don't i don't want her and she was getting really worried and thought maybe she'd have to take her to like a shelter or something and Josh was like, I don't want her going to shelter. We'll take her. That's right. And so a week later, we picked her up. And um, because she's so <laughs> she's so ugly, we named her Miss Pretty. You know, Josh wanted to make her feel better about herself. But she's his baby. She uh, She's always, she, she just looks at him all lovingly. And she goes up to him. And she sleeps on him. And, you know, so Miss Pretty is his baby. My little marmalade, too, is my baby. And then the, the original we, we wanted, we named her Jelly she's uh everybody's baby jelly is just chill she doesn't care about anything she'll she'll sit there she'll sit on you she likes to eat and eat and eat and eat and, eat. and she um she's not scared of vacuum cleaners or anything she's like she's just real brave she's the bravest most outgoing one of them all and um these three they are the most adorable babies they love us so much they are definitely a secure part of our family they are here and they are not going anywhere um they are so spoiled and so smart. Uh, we bought them like a big we old cat, them a big tree. cat tree. They get wet food every night. They're so smart that um, we tell them bedtime and they know they're going to get wet food and it's time to go to bed. So they come up and they start screaming and meowing and then they run to the bedroom and wait. And um, it's just the cutest thing. But they're good girls. They're they're really good, smart cats. And we love them to death. You know, they're, they're our babies. Aside from that, we have also got two dogs. Um, one is a two-year-old white Siberian Husky named Loki, and he is an indoor dog. He definitely did grow up around cats. Um, we saw plenty of pictures. We did plenty of background checks on him just to be sure. I did not want another dog, period, but Josh, Josh loves dogs. He is a dog person, and he was always like, I'm just having dogs, and I... I told him I don't want another dog, but I thought that was really unfair on him because, like, while well, I'm a cat person, he's a dog person. He still loves cats, but he also loves dogs, and it wasn't fair on me to completely take that option away from him. So I looked around, I found this one, and um, he fell in love with him. That's his buddy. That's his boy. He's um, he's got white eyes. He's all white. He is a sweetheart. He's a he's a big teddy bear. He's just gentle and he loves everybody and everything. He he is so sweet and he is smart. He's crate trained. He lets himself outside to go pee. Comes back in when he's done. You know, he's he's a good boy. The only thing he really does wrong is um, as all animals do, he likes to get into the other dog's food and it's like, no, that's not yours. Or get into the cat litter or whatever. But we have stuff sectioned off so that they can't go places they're not supposed to go. Um, our last family family member is a tiny, tiny little Chihuahua Shih Tzu. And that's, she's everybody's baby, but she's my baby. And she's brown with a little white on her chest. And her name is Coco Pebbles, but we call her Pebbles. Um, she's two months old now. We, we only just actually got her uh, a couple weeks ago. Those people lied to us when we got her because they said she was at least seven weeks old, which we thought was, that's still too young. You shouldn't give an animal away or sell an animal any younger than eight weeks, but 12 weeks is optimal. 
they need that time with their parents. Um, I can't stand seeing people trying to get rid of animals at seven weeks, but at least I know and Josh knows that that's not a good age. We know what to do, how to treat them, how to take care of them. And so we figured if we don't get her and we're like, no, well, she's too young, somebody else will get her and they might not know what to do or how to, how to take care of her. So we figured at least if she comes with us, we can give her a good life, contrary to popular belief, but we do give them good lives. Um, and so we got her, when we got her, we took her to the vet for a checkup right away, got her wormed and defleed and all that stuff. And it turns out she wasn't seven weeks. She was closer to five weeks. She didn't even have her teeth yet. Um, she had some of her top teeth, no bottom teeth that broken through. She could barely see, she could barely walk. She weighed two pounds though. She literally like fit in the palm of your hand. Now she's grown. She's probably closer to three, maybe four pounds, but she's still like itty bitty. She's like the smallest little thing. And um, she is so smart. She learned her name within the first week. She was almost fully potty trained within four days, believe it or not. We put down puppy pads. She would go over there and pee and poo. She has accidents still here and there when she's playing or she's in an area of the house that's far away from her, her bed in her usual um, puppy pad area then she might like poo poo on the floor or something like that but we keep her kind of in a small section right now while she's learning and growing and uh, her little tail's always wagging like that and she's the cutest little thing and Loki plays with pebbles and he is so gentle with her like she sticks her whole head up in his mouth and he he doesn't clamp down of course he just kind of and he nudges her with his nose and he gets real down low on the ground with her and um sometimes when she's sitting there he'll put both paws next to her like this and kind of like protect her you know he'll, he'll hold her like this and she cuddles up you know in his tail or in his arms and they're so close When we went to the park, we actually had to take them to a, um, like a puppy daycare because we live like five, six hours from the park now and we were gone all day and so they had to stay overnight and um, we made sure they had all their vaccinations and their, you know, their, their vet checkups and everything like that. And we took them there and we got them a kennel together and everybody was in love with them. They're so cute. They're so beautiful. You can drop them off more often if you want. Everybody wanted to see them and the girl even because uh, when it was time to pick them up I wasn't feeling good and Josh went uh, by himself to collect them and the girl that was there was like oh my god can you give your wife my phone number and she gave him her number to give to me and all that and said you can leave Pebbles here for a few more days because everybody loves her because she's so small and cute but um, that's our complete family now. The cat's they, they're still a little bit wary of Loki because he's, um, he's big. He doesn't chase them or anything. And we make sure they're never left unsupervised together because even though we know he's good around cats, we would never risk anything like Stormy happening again. So they are always locked separately at night and they're always watched and monitored. Um, but the cats, you know, they, they kind of walk over to him and he sniffs them and licks them and they're like, they tolerate it until he's right up in their face and then they kind of do their hey, I'm going to hit you if you keep doing that. And um, Pebbles, they've started kind of jumping down with her and kind of, they do this thing where they're trying to tease her. Like they, they want her to chase them. They get down and they look for her and then they kind of prance around. And then when she runs after them, they jump up and pretend they didn't want it. But then when they realize that she can't jump up and follow them, they jump back down again. And so they're kind of starting to play with her because she's actually way smaller than they are at, She's probably about nine weeks now. Um, at nine weeks, she is still smaller than they were when we got them. So she is tiny. She's always going to be tiny, though, because of her breed. But she is the cutest thing. And they all get along so well. They are all so well behaved. And we have a big old family now, but we love it. We're, we're happy. And um, this is how it's going to stay. I don't see any reason whatsoever that any of these animals would be rehomed. I mean... Sometimes we get animals and they're just like, they're just 
bad or they're they're not a good fit you know what I mean like nothing's ever perfect and I know I get judged for rehoming animals sometimes but just sometimes if if an animal is just doing something wrong constantly they have been grown up or raised a certain way or let run free a certain way it takes a lot of training to unbreak that or sometimes it's just that's just how they are and it causes you a lot of stress it causes them a lot of stress and overall it's just not a good environment and I'm kind of a like not necessarily a perfectionist but kind of a perfectionist I, I like things a certain way and I don't like my animals to like jump on counters or you know on tables and things like that and if if there's a cat like the white cat we used to have that is always on the counters and always doing stuff and you're always having to like scold them or discipline them they start to get scared of you and it's just it's just a bad environment you know they need to be with somebody who either has the patience or ability to train them out of that or doesn't give a shit and lets them just do their thing and that is not us and so yeah a few times we've had to find better homes for the animals that just haven't meshed with us uh, or we've been lied to and it just hasn't it hasn't worked out whenever I go to get an animal I ask a billion and one questions because I want to be sure that they're a good fit because I know I'm kind of a really picky owner and I don't want to have to rehome an animal so I'll sit there and I'll ask I'll say this is my concern this is my concern this is what I tolerate this is what I won't tolerate how is your animal do they do this do they do this do they do this do they do that and I try to keep in contact after we get the animal I send pictures I send updates and if I have any questions, I ask questions and try to get tips, advice. How did you discipline them? How did you stop this? Did they ever do this? Did they ever do that? Um, if there's a problem, will you take the animal back? Because that's the first thing you should do is see if the original owner wants the pet back. I go through all these steps. But most people just want to unload their pets. So they lie, tell you what they think you want to hear. And then you're stuck with a mismatch. And while some people can deal with mismatches, that's one of my flaws. I can't. Um, I try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I send them off to somebody who can give them a better home than I can give them however the babies that we have now we've had them for for months and they've you know they've had their little misbehaviors here and there but overall there are babies and they're here you know it, it's like 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 I said about the house when you walk in to certain homes you feel like wow this is home this is where I'm gonna stay this is where I'm gonna be it's the same with them it's like you know what you're you're home you're not going anywhere I, I can say with all certainty they're here to stay I couldn't imagine our lives without them uh, yeah that was a long-winded explanation of about almost generally nothing sorry but it's been a long time since I've made a video oh when we went to carry ones I actually bought sunglasses for the first time I couldn't find anything that I really liked cuz I I'm not used to being outside um, Whereas people think I bleach my skin, in reality, I just stay indoors a lot. I'm part white, you know, so I do have light skin. Um, in my pictures, I use certain filters and things to smooth out my skin, and it lightens my skin. In real life, you can see the color. I'm actually tan. My nose is a bit sunburnt. I'm a bit sunburnt right here from being outside, a little bit here. But um, I'm actually quite brown. <laughs> I'm tan now because I go outside now. I have... A real life I think my knuckles are actually a little bit sunburned too but um yeah I'm I'm tan that's what happens when I go outside in New Zealand I was indoors almost exclusively for about 10 years so you can imagine my skin would be pretty light it doesn't mean I lighten my skin it just means I'm white I'm half white and I didn't go outside anyway <laughs> check out these sunglasses that I found I don't wear sunglasses usually I don't like them I quite like these even though they're I don't like big sunglasses um, these are quite big in my opinion but they're pretty cool I, I don't really think I look right with shades on I haven't actually worn sunglasses since Ozfest back in like 2001 I found these at Walmart for two dollars they were marked down from ten dollars they weren't even marked down we scanned the tag and it said two dollars but how cool are those uh, no, it's not bad for fucking two dollars like I don't know how often I'll wear them but that's really cool yeah, I just wanted to makeup bag from um, this chick uh, Manku gal or something like that I'm not sure what her 
how to pronounce her name. I don't know what it means, but she's pretty cool. Um, she sells some stuff. She's like a scream queen type chick, a <laughs> horror chick, uh, Instagram girl, whatever. But she's got this online shop where she sells some stuff. And I'd seen this makeup bag uh, I thought was pretty cute. And uh, it's got prints on both sides. It's pretty big. I took this to the park with me too so I could keep my makeup separate. It would be cool if it glowed in the dark, if it doesn't, but that is still a badass thing. I'm also going to do a review soon about this lipstick that I'm wearing. Um, it's this new brand that I found, and I've got two colors uh, out of their five, but this color is my new favorite red. It is beautiful. I got a red and I got a purple, so I'll probably do that review when I shut off the camera since I'm dressed. That's pretty cool. So I will have this video uploaded, the theme park video, and the lipstick video. I'm not, I don't know when I'm going to come back or if I'm going to come back fully. I would like to get back on Facebook here and there because there's stuff I want to share, you know, like I've got some cool pictures from the park. I'll add at least two pictures from the park here at the end of the video just uh, to hold you over until I upload the other videos. But, um, I don't know, you know, I, I'm happy being away from the drama. I'm happy staying offline. I actually, I don't even have time to do hardly anything anymore as it is, so I wouldn't even be able to make lots of videos. Every time I think I want to make a video and talk about this and this and that, I just, I just don't have the time to do it, you know? Between work, the animals, getting the house sorted, um, there's just, there's just no time left in the day to sit around and be online and I don't know. So I don't know if coming back is going to happen or if it's not going to happen. Um, no idea. Uh, videos might be sporadically here and there. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's nice having a real life, you know, like a life outside of the internet where you're not so focused on other people, what other people are saying, what other people are doing. Um, the only time I even open my laptop anymore is when we're watching so because I've got movies and stuff downloaded on here. We hook it up to the TV because we actually have a TV now. We've got a 55 inch Philips. I think it's Philips TV. And um, we hook the laptop up. We hook the laptop to the TV and watch movies. And um, that's about the only time it's even open. Like I don't even, I, I check my email from my phone and that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't check anything else. I don't do anything else. And it's so weird. Um, I don't even remember when the last time was I was really like online online it just it feels like it's been so long but I know realistically it probably hasn't it's probably I, like I said I think it's only been about six months but it feels like it's been years almost um, it's almost Christmas time I'm definitely gonna have a Christmas video uploaded because we've got like we're, we're gonna have a big Christmas this year tons of stuff I don't know if we're gonna see his family or not um, but we are definitely going to have a, a nice big Christmas and I've already got like 25 presents for him or something like that. I was, I've spoiled him this year. We're looking for something to do on Halloween. Um, we've got, you can probably see up there behind me, we've got two masks. We bought those from the Horror Dome and that's a girly one for me and that's a boy one for him. Um, I've painted mine up and added more blood and bruising to it and stuff, and before the movie even was announced, we had decided on these costumes. Um, he's going to be a priest with that head, and I'm going to be a nun with that head, and, and we had bought them, and then I saw trailers for the movie The Nun. We actually went to go see that um, a couple days ago. It was alright. It was better than the new Annabelle movie. I quite liked it. It wasn't scary. It was a bit creepy. Jump scares. I like jump scares, though. And, um, I don't know. It was alright. I, I, I'm not upset. I don't think it was a waste of time or anything. I, it was a decent movie. I would I would watch it again. Um, but I know people are going to be dressing up as nuns probably for Halloween because that's what they do. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't know. But the back of the mask is open and there's no way to really hide that and so because of that I needed something to put over and I thought well 
a nun's headpiece will cover it. So that's how I came up with that. And I thought, well, shit, you know, uh, a last note. I keep saying this, the last note also is um, I'm going to be getting LASIK. I've gone into the clinic and I've gotten my pre-evaluation whatever done and I am a candidate for it still and I do have the money for it. Um, well, they, they like keep trying to talk me into financing so we'll probably just go with the financing just because it's easier but um, they, uh, they just need, because I'm diabetic, I have to have three months of blood tests and I still don't have a doctor, I um, just haven't, haven't had time for any of this stuff, and here you need insurance. I know it's something I should have known, but when I was in America before, I wasn't really sick. Um, I had Medicaid for Dorian. I never really went to a doctor. I didn't have a family doctor of my own, and I never had to deal with insurance. And then I moved to New Zealand where things are completely different. I came back here and I don't know anything about the healthcare system. I don't know anything about insurance. Um, I'm completely new to all of it. And so I'm still trying to learn my way around things like that. And it turns out there's only like one time a year you can sign up for insurance, which is really stupid. And I think that's coming up at the end of the year. So once I can sign up for insurance, um, then I can find a doctor and get some blood tests done, take them in. If my blood hits that, I can get my blood to the safe level, then I, I go in and get LASIK. And so finally this dream of most of my life will be realized and I'll be able to see, like I can't even imagine what that would be like to wake up and just open my eyes and I can see. I can take a shower and I can look down and I can see. You know, I won't have to scramble and look for glasses anymore. It just it's just, it would be the most amazing, amazing, amazing thing. And they said they're pretty sure they could get me to 2020 or better, even though I've got really bad eyesight. And that is amazing in itself as well. Um, so everything has just gone up since the last time I was really online. My life has just gone up and up and up and up. Everything has improved. There's not a single aspect of my life that has gone downhill. Everything has gotten better and better and better. And I just wanted to keep going, you know, I wanted to keep growing and going this way. And it's just the most wonderful feeling like not to be depressed. We, we bought a chest freezer and it is full to the top of food. We've got a really big fridge and that top is full of food. So we, we're not going to starve. We're not going to run out of food. The animals have got plenty of food. We've got a, a local vet. Um, we've got everything like, and we got married. Um, we, we didn't have the wedding we wanted because we didn't want to wait. It was, we were up and down on the dates, you know, maybe on my birthday, maybe on this day, maybe on that day. And we just, we'd, we'd lay in bed at night and we'd hold each other and we, God, I wish we were married. I really wish we were married. And we're like, you know, we have the money to do it. Why don't we just, why don't we just do it? Our anniversary is coming up. We should just do it on our anniversary. And he had originally suggested that, that was the first date he ever suggested to me. And so we, we decided to go ahead and do it on our one year anniversary and we didn't have time. I might've mentioned this all in that video. I don't know, but we didn't have time to look for clothes cause we had just made it kind of on the fly decision. And, um, so we just, we went to Goodwill and I picked out the only, the only dress they had there that fit. And he picked out some clothes there. The only things there that fit. And we had always planned maybe towards the end of the year or next year we'll have a proper wedding. Like where we get really dressed up. I, I wanted to wear like a kind of a baby blue chiffon gown and he was going to wear like a black and blue suit, you know, stuff like that. So we're still debating doing that. Um, but what was important to us wasn't that we had the right clothes or the right audience or anything like that. The important thing to us was that we get married, that we we're finally husband and wife. And so that is what we did. And, um, we're happy with our decision and, He's my husband and uh, I don't see this marriage going anywhere. We're still as compatible as we were when, you know, when I first got here, even more so, you know, we, we like almost every single thing the same. He is so easy to go along with. He treats me like a queen. Like he really does treat me good. He does anything for me, anything and everything. And I try to do as much for him as possible. We're just, we're happy. We're still affectionate. We're still always touchy and huggy and lovey. And I still look at him and think that he is gorgeous, especially when he lets his hair down. He is just beautiful. That boy loses so much hair, though. Like, 
his hair is everywhere. I'm like, how the hell do you still have hair on your head? <laughs> you lose so much hair, but he's got so much thick hair and he's just, he is everything to me and I couldn't be happier or more content in my relationship, my life, anything right now. Um, he's just made me feel so good about myself and so good about my life and we have our little family and we have our house, we have stability, we have money, we have our jobs, we have a good car, we have food, we have our bills paid up. I mean, what more could you really ask for? You know, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm on top of the world. I honestly do. And I don't want anything to change. So that's why I'm kind of hesitant to go back online because <laughs> I'm very impressionable, but, uh, I might be around here and there, no promises. Um, I really miss you guys. I miss all you cool people, the supporters, the people who have been here, the people who have sat through this almost hour long update video. I did warn you it was going to be long. I just felt like talking and catching up because it has been so long. Um, yeah, I just, I do miss interacting sometimes, but I just don't miss the drama and everything I say and do being twisted around and turned around and, you know, me being made to feel like I'm doing something wrong with everything I do or I'm fat and I'm old and I'm ugly and I'm this and I'm that. Here I could walk around. He tells me I'm beautiful every single day and, you know, he, oh, you look great, you look great. And I'm just like, no, I don't, but he, he makes me feel beautiful. And like, I'm the only person in the world and he gives me all his attention. And then when we go out, I thought, you know, at the theme park for sure, I thought nobody's going to pay attention to me because it, I mean, that city's got almost a million people. You'd see so many people that look like me there, but I got so much attention and everywhere we go still, every single time I go out, oh my God, I love your hair. Oh my God, I love your tattoos. Oh my God, you look so cool. Or just flat out, you're beautiful. And it just like, I still get really shy, but it makes me feel so good. Like these people just come out of nowhere and stop me and it. And it hasn't slowed down or stopped since I got here. It's actually gone up and I don't get any negative comments or looks or scowls or anything. Like the people are so sweet. Last time we went to Walmart, um, there was this lady that came up to me and she said that she saw me walk in she searched the whole store for me until she found me. And then she tracked me down just to tell me that I look gorgeous, you know? And I was just like, wow, these people are so brave too. Like I would never have the balls to go up to somebody and be like, oh my God, I love the way you look. Like I just wouldn't be able to do it. So I really applaud their, their bravery in, in approaching a stranger to offer a compliment because not everybody takes kindly to people coming up to them for whatever reason. And, um, I, I do think that's very, very cool. Very cool. And yeah, I've been here almost a year. It'll be a year in about a month and, um, I'm still not used to it. I'm still not like, Oh, it's just America. Uh, I'm back in America. Yeah, it's no big deal to me. It's still like, wow, what's that? Wow. What's that? Oh my God. And you know, this is so cheap and that's so cheap. And, and it, I, the newness has not worn off for me at all. Like I still don't feel like this is home. I feel like a foreigner. Don't feel like I belong in New Zealand, but I don't feel like I belong in America either. Um, I just feel like a stranger in a strange place, you know? Um, but it, it's kind of cool. I probably look like an idiot walking around like, what's that? What's that? Oh my God. They have this brand of cereal. They have so many flavors of cereal and so many flavors of drinks. And it's just, there's so much variety here. I don't think I will ever get tired of it. And I thought, you know, probably when I'm here a year, I'll, I'll already be used to everything again. It'll be like, like I never left, but it hasn't hit that yet. And I don't know if it ever will. It just, everything still feels so fresh and new and different and things are always changing and there's always new stuff coming out and, you know, holiday decorations and actual holidays being celebrated and things like that. And people walking around, they don't care how they look. And I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't care as much how I look. If, you know, I feel a little fat or I've gained a little weight or, you know, I don't look perfect. Maybe I shouldn't care. Like when we were at the theme park, you know, it was hot and I had a bikini top and a, a, a not a bikini bottom. It was like a attached skirt. So it was still kind of decent. And, um, 
I had my cover up on. I actually took it off and just walked around in a bikini top. And I've never in my life done that. Not even when I was skinny. And I see these people walking around like way bigger than me. And they are like without a care in the world. And I know Josh loves me for however I look. He is so non-judgmental. I just, I just did it. And I felt so free. Like, I don't know if I'll ever feel like that again. Or I get the balls to do something like that again. But in that moment, I felt so free just to be able to be myself and walk around and be comfortable without having to worry about how I looked or how other people might see me and know that I was loved for the way that I looked and I didn't have to worry that there's other bikini girls walking around there's fat girls little girls you know girls with perfect bodies or whatever but I didn't feel threatened or like oh my god don't look at her you know it was just I was just happy and having a good time and I'm not used to feeling like that Ooh, blurry stop there you go um I'm used to always having to worry that there's everybody better looking than me and I just don't measure up, but not this time. This time I, I felt so comfortable in my own skin and I hope I can feel like that again soon, <laughs> but I have Josh to thank for that. So I'm going to shut the fuck up now and close this. I was trying to get it close to an hour just to round it off. I did want to share one more thing with you guys, something small. You might see this mirror behind me. This is this awesome bed that we got. Um, it's a California King, but that is the headboard. Uh, I don't know how much you can see. Ooh. So it goes from there all the way over to there, ignore my coffee. And this actually opens up and it is, yeah, I don't want to break stuff, but that is storage. Um, there's shelves all up and down on both sides of that. And it comes with a three drawer black nightstand like attached to it. It is the coolest fucking bed ever. I'm so happy with it. I just want to share that. And it has a, a big black dresser on that side of the room too. But again, when I fix up the house, I will do a tour and show you guys everything and introduce you to our babies. But they're all asleep right now because it is like four in the morning. So um, I will catch up with you guys when I catch up with you. I'm so sorry, partially that this is long. Um, no other video should be this long. I will try my best to keep it down. But then again, I'm never really around. So if you want to know everything at once that's been going on, you're going to have to sit through shit like this. Either or. I don't know. I hope you guys have been well. And I hope that you guys are doing really good. Like I'm doing really good. Um, like I said, I miss you guys. I do. I miss my supporters. I miss my friends. Um, Keep in touch, you guys. I'm still around-ish. It might take me a while to get back to you. Um, whenever I have some downtime, I check. It's not every day, but I try to check my email when I can. I don't check YouTube, really, because I, I don't really have any reason to. Um, but you'll know when I'm back. I'll make a video, and I'll say, oh, my Facebook's back on or something. But I don't know when that would be. Maybe at the end of the year. I'm not so sure. If it will come back on, I don't even remember my login right now. Um, it's been that long. I, I have to try to remember what my email was and stuff, but I will see you guys. I'll upload the other videos. I'll space them out a little bit. So you guys have something to watch later. Take care, everybody. I hope you have a great day and, um, I hope you're still awake after this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will see you guys around. Take care. Miss you and see you. Josh says hi, probably. <laughs> Bye.